I'm going to start with this slide, Jacket Draws' musician and the writer from 16th century. And this particular work was influential in my research into robotic art, and although it wasn't considered the first example of robots in art, it had a strong impact on my research, which uh, this is the first incarnation of that. So this is an old piece from 2009 called The Hosts a masquerade of improvising automatons. So as you can see, the dresses were influenced by this 16th century automata. They're very ornate. They draw people in, and people want to get close to the robots and touch them. Each one, it's a masquerade ball for robots. So each one has a character, so I've designed characters for them. There's princess, clown, military, and Cowboy or Rodeo in this shot. This was uh, at the media Mediations Biennale in Poland and it got to exhibit the work in a very apt setting, which was a castle. A castle. And it had parquetry floors and beautiful ornate um, circular room. So in this work, the robots spin around. There's computers inside. And they're all connected via a Wi-Fi network and there's ultrasonic rangefinders at the base to allow them to do their other behaviour. So the first behaviour is that they spin around and you get this beautiful kind of wind of the dress and the dress touches you, so it's very tactile, as mentioned before. Uh, but I also wanted to play around with the uncanny again, but through this time through abstracted human-like forms, so they're not too human the main response was that they looked like Daleks in drag. <laughs> but the main insight that I had was that people thought that they were responding to them individually. But the main behaviour was avoid and wander. So they avoided walls and people in the same way. So that led me to my other work. But so anything else to say about this one? So the main, oh yeah, there's automated 10 minute sequence. So there's sound and light, there's sound on the robots and there's sound within the space. So there's atmospheric sound and there's individual kind of like voice sounds for each robot. And they drive around. So I was interested, this, this kind of idea of choreography came up in this particular work. I had a 10 minute loop and there was a choreography or a timeline in which each behaviour was switched at a certain point, and at that certain point, new sound was triggered in the surround sound, and new lighting was triggered as well. So this insight that people wanted robots to follow them led me to this work called the Akonchi Robot, <coughs> named after Vito Akonchi and his performance piece, Follow, from 1969. So in that work, Vito followed people around, I think, New York, and then wrote about his experience following people. Uh, so in this instance, the robot follows you, but it only follows you when you're not looking. So it uses a Kinect camera. I'll play the video. Please excuse my bold text fonts. Um, so this is in China. It's following the gallerists workers who work at the gallery during closed hours. Um, so in this work it uses a connect camera to turn the human into a blob. And then the distance sensors detect how far out away it is and then it follows them. So this particular work allows people to walk slowly it had different responses. Some thought it was creepy, some thought it was um, contemplative because of its slow movement and its you know, very kindly nature. Some people thought it was patient. So that people were projecting uh, human-like qualities onto it, even though it was the shape of a box shipping crate. It was sent over in a shipping crate and a shipping crate come out Um, yeah, the funny thing about this work was that in China, in Beijing, thousands of people go to this gallery a day. 
They called me up. They said, the work's broken. I said, look at it, turn around, and walk away. So they, they did that, and it started walking. <laughs> but because of thousands of people go and look at it, it, they thought it wasn't working because it didn't move. So that was the... This is a... Gallery is a great testing ground for new types of interactive experiences. Any questions or comments so far? Good. Oh, okay. So, from my insights in the first work, the hosts, I thought I could stretch it out into a 35 minute. And this time I was going to use all my camp sensibilities of the first work and challenge opera. This is called Robot Opera. The idea is to create a fully autonomous robotic opera that people can come and pay. They actually did pay to come and see this work. Uh, so in this time, I used the mechanical format or the machine aesthetic, as I like to call it. So you can see all the electronics. You can see it's metal. It's got lights and so on. Uh, again, there's connect cameras and LiDAR sensors and computers, amplifiers, speakers, surround sound and surround lighting system. The issue I had with this work was, well, let me run through it first. So we developed a dramatic arc. I work with a dramaturge and a lighting designer and a sound designer, a project manager, etc. So in the first part, the audience are at the back and the robots are at the front and they turn around slowly. It's called the reveal. And then the lights slowly come on and they, they do this, this um, sequence called the sequencer. So each robot has a sound and a light. I'll show you a video in a moment. But in this image right now, they're slowly moving at the slowest speed and the sound builds up and the lights build up. So it sets this kind of anxiety. And this is a Sydney-based audience, very conservative. Hmm. <laughs> and later on in Taiwan, you'll see how they interacted. Uh, so there's different moments within the 30-minute performance where the robots are interacting with people. Again, they're following people. Their, their lights change when they detect humans. And it says in a human, uh, in a robot voice, human detected. And then another part of the sequence, the, all the robots come into a configuration again. And then they spin around on the spot, uh, indicating they're out of control. So playing around with those preconceived notions that robots are going to take over. Here they're spinning around. And at the end, there's one sole robot that drives around, and the red light comes on. I'll just play a little bit. So thinking, talking about the sound with the sound designer, we're thinking about 2001, representations of robots in popular culture. So the sign tone and the theremin, I guess, is a good reference. This is a live view of what the Kinect camera sees, representing the robot's vision. So the people can see themselves on the other, on the back side of the robot. This is an example of the flashing light when a human is detected. So it's kind of like a police state in a way. This is kind of an intimate um, female voice section with all, everything goes red. So I wanted it to be dangerous and kind of get people out of their comfort zone, exploring the 
breaking down the fourth wall, exploring some of the concepts of La Forest del Baos perhaps, but not that extreme, unfortunately. Uh, this is the, when they're going back into formation, and this is the noise section, all the lights go off. And so on. This is uh, presenting the work in Taiwan in a smaller space. And people are much more engaged in Taiwan <laughs> with technology. Uh, they thought that if they used their hands to make the shapes that the robots were, had on their, in their lights, that the robots would respond in new ways, in different ways, by movement or sound. So I thought that was something to follow up on, perhaps. And that's quite easily done with the Connect. Uh, again, if they think they're in this work, it was semi-autonomous. So in some stages, it's autonomous. In other stages, we're actually controlling them. So we get a bit. Um, we want to run people over sometimes. So you push it a bit further. So here you can see they're doing the symbol again to get some sort of feedback. Uh, this is a new work from 2017 called Synthesizer Robot. I'm interested, as you interested in this notion that the robot is playing music for itself, so it's a synthesis. synthesis. It's a robot, yeah. The robot is um, automated to play a th synthesis engine. Um, so this idea is that kind of builds on Gil Weinberg's idea about robotic musicianship and robotic musical gesture. But in my version, I want it to be four robots in a band. So you might go and watch a concert of four robots perform, perhaps with audio visuals or just with music. So in Petra's video, you might have heard some of the sounds in the previous video. So it was exhibited in Sydney uh, twice. So happy to talk over the top as we watch this little three minute video. Any questions? Would you pay money to go and see this robot? <laughs> yeah, in the Akonchi robot? No. It's automated. I'm looking at programming it in a more sophisticated way. This was um, just using the keyframe. These days, um, it's not impossible. You know, have them go really fast, have them crash. B bit of S SRL action, survival, survival research labs style. Sorry, what did you say? Yeah. <laughs> That's right. Yes. No, I haven't. I'm more about no humans. Because yeah. <laughs> I'm interested in what, if we can be entertained or interact through interactive uh, autonomous robots. Yeah, like I've explored various materials and that kind of influences the behaviours of the robots. But then the feedback from the audience response gets fed into the new work and helps the insights or direction that I might take. So I've tried different materials. I'm not sure which one's the best, but I probably, you know, for this conference, I wanted to show the soft robots. And I have done another robot, which is kind of hard and soft. But I deleted the slide. But... Yes. 
Yeah. Yeah. Right. No. The angels, the band. No, no, no. In Doctor Who. Right. Okay. No, I kind of wanted like 60s street performance, uh, everyday materials for that particular work. Right on time. Thank you.